Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.9.9 and Ergis Simulations Mirage F1 EE module. Welcome to Tutorial 8, Navigation. Today we will go over the basic navigational systems available in the F1 EE model. Uh, keep in mind that this is the version of the Mirage F1 which includes an INS system. Even with the inclusion of the INS, it is fairly basic. However, you can do most things with this system, and I'll, I'll cover all of these basics today. Uh, the first thing to look at is the PCN down here. This is the main control panel for the INS, and it allows us to select one of the nine pre-stored waypoints in the system. Uh, by default, these will be the waypoints that were created in the mission editor. If you have more than nine waypoints in the mission editor, it will only import the first nine. This system is quite easy to operate. Uh, you've got your, uh, your main control, your parameter selector up here. By default, it's going to show your uh, current position uh, coordinates. And if we switch it to pause for position, it will show us the position of the currently selected waypoint. And we can change which waypoint is currently selected by moving this thumb wheel. Uh, you can see in this particular example, I have waypoints 1 and waypoint 2. Uh, worth mentioning, in the mission editor, of course, waypoints begin at 0. Uh, so anything that's imported from the mission editor, waypoint 0 will in fact be waypoint 1. So currently I've got two waypoints in the system here, and you can see that VERS uh, in this window here is the one that we currently have selected to fly to. Uh, you can select another waypoint by moving the thumb wheel to the, the number that you want and pressing asterisk, and that will change the VERS window in the PCN. Uh, you also have the ability to display your uh, distance to that current waypoint as well with the delta E, uh, sorry, delta L, delta G position and putting it back to PP will display the current position of the aircraft. Hey, one last thing that I'll demonstrate is how to add waypoints to the system using the control panel. Uh, we can see if we put it back in position that waypoint three is empty. You can simply start typing and that will allow you to enter waypoints. Now note that these are in uh, degrees, minutes and decimal uh, with a single decimal point. So if I want to enter uh, a new waypoint, I can simply say N for North and I'm going to enter 3444.1 and you can see the left hand side of the window those details are there. I can now press insert and that's memorized. I can then select easting uh, and keep in mind that for easting we use a, a leading zero. I'm going to enter 03321.0 and press insert. That's now stored in waypoint number three and I can flip back and forth between these. If I want to fly to waypoint three, I simply press asterisk, and we're now flying to waypoint three. I'm gonna return the system to present position because that's the default. Next, we're gonna go ahead and tune our navigational radios so that we're ready to demonstrate those. On the right-hand console here, we have the controls for uh, the heading selection, it calls it. That, that controls the uh, current heading bug. Uh, we have the ability to select a course, either for TACAN or VOR and ILS, or this system can be turned off entirely. And then we have the radio heads for TACAN and for the VOR ILS. The VOR ILS is the same radio, so you can only have one tuned at a time. Uh, so uh, we're going to tune uh, a local TACAN, which in this case is 107 X-ray. So I'm going to roll this, I'll actually roll it backwards. We'll go 10, and then we will select 7. And we've got the mode in transmit and receive. Uh, you can also, you can flip it between X-ray and the Yankee bands, uh, but in our case we want it on X-ray. You'll notice that we immediately started to hear the Morse code. Uh, once you've verified your Morse code, if you want that to be silent, you can look at the audio panel on the left console here, and you're interested in the control for TAC, you can turn that all the way down to zero, and you'll no longer hear that. Uh, let's go ahead and tune a VOR now as well, so that we have that. I've, I've got a VOR nearby on 117.9. So let's tune that in. 117, decimal 9, and again we're getting a Morse code. Uh, if we're happy that that's the correct station, we could then turn the VOR volume off as well, and that will now no longer bother us. So uh, right now we've got a TACAN tuned, a VOR tuned, and we've currently got the course selector turned off. Uh, let's now take a little look at the IDN. Um, 
the IDN, this is the, the main navigational instrument in the aircraft, will often be used with the spherical indicator here. The spherical indicator will display the to or from flag uh, for radio navigational aids, and it will also display the deviation indicator if you've got a set course. We've currently got that turned off, so there's currently no indicator here. Uh, let's focus down on the IDN for now, though. IDN has two master modes, NAV and RNAV. In NAV, the navigational information will come from the INS. In RNAV, the information will come from the radio navigational aids. Uh, this wheel here allows us to move the pointer. Uh, so RNAV and NAV modes have a normal and an offset mode. Uh, it's not going to make any difference which you're in right now because I don't have an offset set. Uh, we then have the setting for theta which allows us to give the bearing of the offset. And then we've got the row indicator, and that allows us to set the distance. And then all the way up, I'm now in INS navigational mode, normal. And then another move, it'll put me to the offset mode. So that's what those modes do. Um, so of course, with it in nav N mode, the uh, thick indicator is going to show me the direction towards the currently selected waypoint in the INS, and a distance in nautical miles will be given in the window below. And I can demonstrate that that changes if I roll to another waypoint and press asterisk. You see distance and direction changed. Waypoint 2, asterisk, we get another uh, direction and another distance. Let's uh, reset it back to waypoint 3 in this case. We've also got a couple of other controls on this display. Up here, we can flip between magnetic or true headings, and it will actually move the entire heading tape. And then we can also control what the skinny pointer is displaying. By default, it'll be on R for radar. If we flip it to V, it will show us the uh, heading towards the currently selected VOR. And that uh, will be displayed in whatever other mode that we have programmed in. So it means that we can always actually reference a VOR or an ILS, no matter what master mode we have the IDN in. We also have the additional vector bearing distance adjustment switch here, which allows us to set one of our offsets. So, for example, uh, let's uh, set the system to theta for bearing. Uh, if I want to make an offset from our local TACAN of 130 for 11.5 nautical miles, I would simply roll this indicator until it says 130, because that's my heading. Oops. It's a little bit fiddly sometimes. There we go. That's about 130. And if I now move it to the, the row position, I can now give the distance. And let's give a distance of 11.5. That's it, 11.5. So I've now entered the row in the theta. If I now move it to RNAV, you can see the normal RNAV will point directly to the VOR. If I go all the way down to RNAV VA mode, we now have a bearing and a distance to that offset that I just set, and I still have the indicator for my VOR at the same time. Or if I was flying an intercept, I might want it to display the, the current uh, radar cursor position. But in any case, that's how those are displayed. Um, if I want to see what I can get up on the spherical indicator, let's move down here and take a look at the Omni bearing, um, what's it called again? The Omni bearing selector. So if I put this into TACAN mode, you'll note that uh, straight away we now have uh, an offset indicator, uh, but we don't have anything in the window just yet because we haven't set a course. If I wanted to fly a course of, let's say, 060, I simply roll that into that window. And then if I look back at the spherical indicator, I can see that that's a from, and I have deviation to the left. So I would simply fly that. It's a little bit strange in that, you know, usually we'd have these indications actually on an HSI or similar instrument. But in the case of the Mirage F1, the IDN does not display deviation at all. And you'll see that as I roll this course, eventually we get it aligned. So we're actually flying a 087 radial just now, from. And if I keep rolling it, and rolling it and rolling it, we'll eventually get that to become a 2. There you go. You'll see that now in the window it's flipped to saying 2, and we're now flying a 2 from that particular radio navigational aid. And if I keep rolling, we'll eventually get zero deviation as well. So we're flying a 266 degrees course uh, to that station. Uh, and if we, if we look actually at our current heading right now, current heading is indicated, by the way, by this little triangle on the very top of the heading rows. Uh, we're currently flying something like mm, 279 or uh, so we're obviously just flying a little bit to the right of that particular TACAN station. 
And if we were actually to put this into normal mode, you'd see, yep, that's absolutely the case. So a nice way of visualizing that. Um, so yeah, those are all of those modes. The last thing that I'll demonstrate actually is uh, where it says cap affiche here. This is how we set the heading bug. Uh, and the heading bug is this little unfilled caret which moves around the outside of the heading rows. Uh, that doesn't do anything in particular other than give you a reference. So if you know that you want to be flying a particular heading, say you've been given a heading by our traffic control, you could set your bug on that particular heading, say 240 as I've done there, uh, and that will st stay there forever. Uh, and you could then reference it when you're flying. So if you get your filled triangle inside the unfilled triangle, you are flying the set heading. Also worth noting, we do have two flags that can appear in here, uh, a flag on the left-hand side for the narrow pointer and a flag on the right-hand side for the thick pointer. That indicates failure of one or both of those particular pointers. Easy to simulate that if I just detune the VR. Uh, and if I have it in one of the VR modes, it should then... There we go. It took a few moments. Uh, you'll now see that the left-hand side is flagged, indicating that the narrow pointer is now invalid. It's not giving us uh, a correct heading. So, that's it. We've got the spherical indicator. We've got the IDN. We've got the PCN, control panel for the INS system. And then we have the radio heads and bearing controls down here. I guess one last thing I could say is that, yeah, the um, the deviation indicator can be in TACAN or VOR, ILS, or OFF by rotating this collar. It works in exactly the same way in the VOR, ILS mode, as long as you do have a, a tune station. If I retune that, we now immediately get the flag again. Uh, and I could actually move this around, and we could fly a course to or from that VOR as well. So... Basic, but you can achieve pretty much everything you might need to achieve with this system. I hope you all enjoyed that, and I'll see you all next time.